What's up, podcast listeners? Welcome to Girl Flip, 45 minutes of real talk about creating space, building community, and switching the flip for women everywhere. Because anything boys can do, girls can do better. I'm Erica Annenberg, your host, and we're on a mission to enforce and promote women history makers and trailblazers in all kinds of professions. Girl Flip features women in male-dominated industries and switches the flip by bringing the feminine touch anywhere and everywhere. This is Girl Flip, where women get it done. I'm so excited to have this platform and to create space for women to share their experiences and stories. So as a young girl growing up in the 70s, I witnessed so much gender inequality that it was, it was really hard for me to process it. I knew I wanted to do all the things that boys did, like play baseball and get dirty in the mud. Uh, I, I was a strong girl, and as a child, I wasn't going to conform to what society said I had to be. Hated pink, hated wearing dresses. So as an adult, my goal is to highlight these strong girls who have now become strong women. I'm third generation strong woman. My mother and grandmother were both a force to be reckoned with. I'm Erica Annenberg, your host. This is Girl Flip. So our first guest is also a force to be reckoned with, and I'm so honored to premiere our podcast with Casey Cooper. Okay. I love it. I love it. So Casey Cooper is the founder of The Compass Circle. Not only is she the hottest trucker I've ever seen in my life, but she started this company and turned it into a $5 million transportation pipeline. Now she travels the world teaching women and minority owners companies how to do the same. Casey, oh my God, when I literally, and I'm so sorry to say that, but like, I'm a gay woman and I'm like, what everyone I've showed, they've been like, oh, you're interviewing her? Like, Hans, I mean, you must be like, literally like the most stunning trucker on the planet. Um, uh, so besides being an incredible entrepreneur and doing, you know, so many things uh, for minority owned companies, I, I just, um, I applause you, seriously. Thank you. So Thank you. Um, the Compass Circle provides specialty service from transportation to ground maintenance, right? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Right. Like, what does that even mean? Right? Yes, exactly. So originally, my I, I started my company. I started doing trucking back in 2006. And over the course of just kind of meandering around and failing forward, I found government contracts, which just means basically I have a certain, you know, service I provide. Instead of me pro pro providing that service to just, you know, any Joe Blow or any company off the street. I also provide that service to the government. And so once you start doing government contracting, there are way more dollars in the federal budget than there are people on the planet. So we end up kind of expanding into different areas because there's less people to do the work. So we do any projects with the government from facilities, uh, maintenance, warehousing, construction, um, and also transportation. So that's all that means. Okay. So, I mean, you didn't just wake up one day and say, I'm going to have a contract with the government no. and trucking. Like, right. can you back up a little? And I mean, did you do it for, uh, you know, businesses, B2B first? Or how right. did you even get into it? Um, initially, I was about 25 and I was kind of looking for something that I could do and use my own money to put somebody else in the chair to make the money for me. So I talk about this all the time. When I was 15, I used to have vending machines. And to be so young and to be able to put a product somewhere that sells on its own, and then once a week, all I have to do is collect my money and go on about my business, I was completely sold, you know, from a very young age that, okay, I don't want to be the one that has to make this money. So that's kind of how it started off. Um, and then when I got 25, I got my first truck. I thought I was going to be able to just put somebody in the truck to drive because I thought, okay, I'm just going to follow the same business model as the vending machines. As luck would have it, that's not exactly how it happened. Um, I did have to end up driving for a few years. 
And being on the road actually let me see in real time what goes on, you know, how everything works, um, the potential challenges and dangers that you can actually face on the road. And it gave me real life experience. So that was 16 years ago. I mean, I pretty much seen it all, like all. Wow. So wait, as a young woman, you got in a truck and you just drove for hours and hours and hours across the country. Oh, yeah. I didn't have a choice. I mean, wow. I was 25, so I we, a lot was of- that scary at all? I mean, oh, yeah, it was scary. But more importantly, I only had but so, you know, so much money. I only had but so many resources. So fear wasn't going to help me behind the wheel of that truck. I just knew, hey, listen, I can't crash. I only have a certain amount of money, you know, so I have to make this work. And so the fear kind of goes out the window when your back is against the wall. So for me, it was fight or flight. Um, I chose to fight and it worked out. Were you, did you have a family, kids? Uh, No, when I was 25, I didn't have any kids at that point. My mother actually co-signed for my first truck for me because I didn't have a lot of credit. My credit wasn't bad. It wasn't good. I just didn't have a lot. Right. So even with that, you know, if it was my own credit on the line, you know, with your, sometimes you'll do things for other people that you won't do for yourself. So having her, you know, on the line, I was like, I can't fail. I can't crash. Nothing can happen. So I was very, very, very cautious, but I wasn't, I wasn't really afraid. No. Right. Okay. So the business model is you buy the truck yourself. Well, well, back then it was. I've gotten way smarter, you know, almost two decades later. Okay. Um, That's how I started out. Now, that's not my recommendation for anybody just who has no knowledge and just wants to get into trucking. I definitely do it way different now. But back then, all my trucks were asset-based. That's what it's called when you have your own trucks. They're asset-based trucks. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a lot harder, you know. You have to make the note. You have to make the insurance payments. You have to do all the repairs. And you have to keep good quality drivers in the truck and that's not always so easy to do right and so now you're leasing the trucks oh definitely no now i set my company up just like uber i have a lot of different facets to my company people Mm -hmm. always try to figure out i've got so much going on yeah (laughs) i have different divisions so we have a lease on division which means we are like uber we now have about 73 trucks that run under our company name. Uh-huh. And so we get a percentage of everything that they haul. So I don't have to worry about making the truck notes. I don't have to worry about the repairs because in essence, I'm subbing out the work to them, but I still get mine off the top. So I end up making more money and having less overhead because I don't have to worry about, you know, if some guy breaks down at four o'clock in the morning, getting the mechanic out there, he's the small business owner and it's his truck. So it's his duty to get his truck back on the road. We're more of the company that facilitates um, the loads and his ability to even work under our company, just like Uber. So it's more of like an infrastructure. Oh, definitely. I mean, this is almost 20 years later. Mm -hmm. I had to get wise (laughs) at some point and it has worked out phenomenally for me now. I wish I hadn't known then what I knew now. I'd be like a billionaire. Hmm. You you know what? I want to just back up a second because- When you say you got on the road as a young woman and you bought a truck and you just went, like what, like how did, what life experiences, you know, happened to you that, you know, made you okay to do that? You know, like, is there something that happened as a child that was just like, I can do this because. No, I mean, we have a fairly, pretty fearless bloodline in my family. We're not scared, you know what I mean? Um, We're just not scared. We're pretty take charge, we're gonna get it done. Um, My grandfather was like that, my grandmother's like that, all my aunts and uncles are like that. We are not afraid. So it was just a new venture. Granted, it didn't go the way I thought it was, but at that point, I mean, my first truck I bought was $80,000. So I didn't have a choice to like go hide in a corner. And mind you, it was in my mother's name. So I could not let her good credit, you know, get, tarnished because I wanted to try some company. And I mean, believe me, even during the course of all of that, she was begging me like, please shut this company down. It's not working out. You know, your truck is breaking down. I mean, she was begging me the whole time, like, please shut this company down. But um, I didn't, I pivoted. And I mean, I say it so matter of factly now, but um, just ended up buying like probably four more trucks, maybe like at the most, I had 10 of my own um, asset-based trucks. Mm -hmm. And then once I got into government contracting, it just completely opened my mind to how millionaires are truly made. 
Um, most people are making their millions off the backs of other people. That's just how it is. Like you, you just, that's just how you do it. Right. So you is that, the, is that your, the turnkey trucking model that you're talking about? Well, now that I'm able to have less um, overhead and just the business model works a lot better. I'm now putting people in the position because everybody wants to get into trucking. They see you, you're beautiful, you're gorgeous, you have all these nice toys, you're flying private, you're doing all this stuff, and they want a piece of the pie too. Unfortunately, everybody's not built um, emotionally, mentally, and especially financially to handle these trucks. These trucks are going to break down. And depending on how far you're going from your home base, you know, I've had trucks break down on me 11 hours away and I have to get the broken truck back or I have to fix it there where it is. And that be can become very costly, especially if you have nine or 10 of them running. So I've been able to create a program called Turnkey Trucking, where we set up the company, just like I explained, we set up the company just like Uber, so that you are the business owner, you can spend, you know, more time just being a great business owner and getting the invoicing done, you know, um, seeing how much money is coming in. And then weekly, you pay your driver, the loads are um, dispatched through a third party. So everything is very automated. And you don't have as much pressure on you to, you know, run out and take care and put these fires out every day. Right. Well, I got to say, my hat is off to you, girl. That is like, and I love the fact that, like, you know, you come from this long, like, line of, you know, fearless, like, relatives, you know, yeah. mothers and uncles and just everyone. It sounds like a bunch of entrepreneurs, quite honestly. Uh, Actually, they're not. Everybody has jobs. Wow. It's only us third generation that, have, and really not a lot. Like, I have to cut. My family is like lawyers, principals, doctors, stuff like that. Um, there's a couple of us in my um, kind of generation, but I'm kind of the more star of the group, if you will. <laughs> yes, you're definitely a star. Well, I guess you have to be fearless and a risk taker. You know, you, you can't just be fearless without being a risk taker in order to you be to. an entrepreneur. You have to. Um, uh, so, you know, what unique struggles do you think um, that come with being a woman of color in the trucking oh, industry? God. <laughs> I don't know what struggles don't come with that. Um, there's so many socio um, e economic uh, issues before you even get the truck. Like, right. You have to get the money to get the truck. Right. So, I mean, we could take that all the way back to, you know, my grandparents generation. Um, so you have to get the funding, you know, like I said, I was 25. I didn't have bad credit. I just didn't have any credit because I, my family, you know, I wasn't set up. Like my mom didn't put me on a credit card when she was 18. It just wasn't, you know, she was fighting for her own, you know, independence back then. So getting the truck, like I said, my first truck was like almost a hundred thousand dollars. Um, luckily my mom was in a position to help me, thank God. Um, and then even when I had the, the company after about a couple years in, I got married and my husband, you know, at the time, my ex-husband, he did not want to get on board. And then you start having kids and, you know, people grow apart, things happen. So then it's like, okay, I've got this company and then I have my marriage. I'm going to have to decide which one is going to survive here because clearly both of these are not. Um, in the end, I ended up choosing my company, which I would do it all over again. And I, and I made the right you know, decision. That was the right choice. Um, I also had a daughter who had autism and she was born about five months early. At that time, I had like three dump trucks on the road, like actively. So I have this baby in the NICU who's one pound fighting for her life, but I have three trucks on the road that have to move every day and they have payments and I have drivers. Um, so it's just, you know, I, I can't even remember a time early on when there wasn't a unique issue. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then, you know, operationally, you have men who are working for you. I was a lot less seasoned then. I was a lot younger and I was not the woman you see today. Now it's not an issue dealing with men. I just say what I have to say and, you know, they do what I say and it, it works. But back then I was also trying to find my voice. I was also trying to figure out, you know, how to get them to respect me. So dealing with men, I mean, men, nobody wants to talk about it, but men deal differently with men than they do with women. It's just a fact. And so that was, you know, all the time, you know, every day, all day, you're dealing with men and you have to say things multiple times. So there were definitely multiple challenges just with me being a woman of color, with me being in trucking and just being like this unicorn, especially back then in my area where I first started, I was like one of the only women, like you could go to any truck part store in Virginia 
they knew who I was. People across the tunnel, they knew who I was because word was traveling. That there's this young black girl out here with this big old truck <laughs> and we can't believe she's doing it. So I was kind of infamous even back then because half of them thought I was going to fail. The other half thought I was crazy. And the other spectators were just waiting to see what was going to happen. Right. And and you loved it. Do you love what you're doing? Um, back then, I, I didn't. I was so laser focused. I didn't even, I didn't have, I was, I had tunnel vision. Like I was always, my back was always against the wall. I didn't have time to think about who thought what of me. I had to have those trucks moving every day. And sometimes that meant, you know, taking the kids out of school early. May They might not make it today, you know, taking them late. Literally, I was putting out fires every day, all day with two little kids, one strapped to my back, one strapped to my leg with a respirator and, you know, all this medical equipment so I didn't have time to look at who was thinking about you know is she gonna fail or not I just had to put my head down and just keep going right so what's next like what's your uh, you know I I love hearing your your history and how you got to where you are tell me tell me what's next for uh Casey Cooper and the compass circle well television is definitely next um I have some pretty remarkable things in regard to that can't say too much about it but I'm um, just doing more TV, just bringing more awareness. I never see women who look like me, whether it's in the contracting sector or in, in trucking. Um, recently, I would say in the last couple of years, like on social media, there is a subculture of us who, you know, do trucking. So there's like hashtags, women, you know, women in trucking. But because I've been able to do it on a very large scale, there are some spaces and tables that I sit at that, again, I am just the only one. So, of course, that makes for great TV. Um, so we're working on some, some stuff right now for just more TV, um, just telling the story and bringing awareness to women who are in this field, who are doing it at a very high level and we are living our best lives. And are you training women to do what, uh, to become truck drivers or just learn more about having this as a, a business model for themselves? Um, a little bit of both and covering some more ground. So there's so many women who are also in like construction and other facets that are not, you know, you don't see a lot of women in. Yep. So on the federal side, we do programs where we teach uh, woman-owned and minority companies how to get federal contracts, um, how to get these certifications because you can't be a woman-owned certified company and that, you know, lessens the competition for you. So we teach on that. Um, and then also setting up the business model, like we talked about turnkey trucking. I also run across women who, um, you know, want to invest and don't have, you know, the know-how or the proper business model to set it up. So, you know, with Turnkey, that allows you to be a business owner and still, you know, make a great wage and, you know, still have your free time. So we do, you know, all kind of facets, um, but just bringing awareness to, to what the options are, because I didn't really know what the options were. So I ended up going down the worst path I could have probably went down. Right. I, I love that. You know, so Girl Flip Construction Company, we're all residential, but I would love to learn more about, you know, government contracts. I know there's a lot of uh, government grants right now to try and bring women into construction um, and they're they're doing a lot of research and there's not that much retention. And, you know, they're coming in. Well, why aren't these women, you know, being retained in construction? And, you know, it's kind of obvious, you know, the foreman, you know, she she has her period and, you know, there's no bathroom for her. And the foreman's this, you know, 55 year old man and he doesn't care. Um, you know, there's the issues like that left and right. And, you know, we're really we're both doing something here where we're we're infiltrating an industry that has, you know, so much resistance towards women and sorry, the time has come. You know, we've we've moved on to a new consciousness, right? And yeah. and and people like you and me are the pioneers. We're on the forefront, and we're breaking these windows and doors and ceilings, and saying, "Come on, let's go!" Right? And we're showing w young girls and our next generations like this is this is the roadmap for this opportunity. 
right? Definitely. I mean, yeah. especially on the federal side, like that's why I like federal money and on the federal side, because the federal government has too many jobs worldwide and too much money to spend to be, you know, to be dilly dallying around trying to be discriminatory. They have one goal. We have to facilitate these goods and services and we have to get these jobs done. And we're not talking about 10 jobs. We're talking about like trillions of dollars worth of projects. So unfortunately, it's a space to where, you know, the average small business owner is just trying to start a business. You know, if you don't have a, a family that is in that particular business or you're just starting out on your own, most people do, are not thinking of doing business with the government. They're just not. So you kind of just end up meandering around trying to find clients. But on the contrary, what looks like a perceived disadvantage, this brown skin or even the fact that I have boobs actually works to my benefit because the government has to spend a certain amount of money with woman owned companies. So here you are, you know, trying to figure it out when the whole time you've got kind of like the golden egg, but you just don't know it. So, and I mean, you know, women are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs right now. So it only makes sense that, like you said, now's the time. This is not the 1800s. You know, we are not making biscuits barefoot in the woods anymore. <laughs> it's really time for, you know, us to take what's rightfully out. I mean, think about it. We've been raising these kids. We've been rearing these families. We've been multitaskers the whole entire time, but never really having the opportunity to own land, to have a business. You know, women weren't even supposed to be having sex. It was like illegal if you didn't have a husband and you couldn't own land and all this stuff. So now I just feel like we're kicking the doors down and just you know, showing who we really are and who we've been the whole entire time. Absolutely. Like 40 years ago, uh, my mom couldn't even get a credit card without her husband's signature. Wow. Like wow. crazy stuff, right? Wow. Um, I, I mean, I want to talk to you some more like offline because I feel like I could learn so much from you, you know? Um, Definitely. Uh, just the fact that, you know, there's these opportunities that I'm not even thinking of, you know? I'm just, I'm doing right. new construction and residential. Well, there's this whole, like you're talking about, you know, government contracts. I mean, you know, for a licensed general contractor, that could be, you know, just a, like, you know, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, right? I mean, and it really is. This... I, um, I took the class to get my GC license because I was going to go into like heavy, heavy construction, like $60 million projects. I'm glad I didn't do that. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, I really respect it because it is not easy to see these jobs and then you have to facilitate them and call in all the subs and call in the framer and the design and the architect and get this structure done is not an easy feat like I don't you know discount what anybody does I don't own a nail shop I don't own a beauty salon you know, like I own a trucking company I do over dimensional loads you know global freight with all these you know international ports it's a very big deal you know doing power plants and bridges and tunnels that's not conventional, you know, regular run of the mill hauling. So even with that, I always try to kick it up into a higher gear um, just because it just takes, you know, it's not really that much more difficult. Again, it's just the awareness piece. We just don't know. And so now that I know, um, I want to make sure that I'm not the only one in the room because, of course, you're only going to see men when you go on these platforms or, you know, in these um, outreaches or these seminars. There's mostly only men there. So it gets a little boring. Well, I'll come you with know. you. <laughs> yeah, please. I mean, it's boring. You know, you want to see some variety. I want to see people different colors and backgrounds. Yeah. And, you know, women, we belong. We've been, I mean, just think about it. Like, there's no company around that does not employ women, especially on the clerical side. But if you think about it administratively, things have to get done with pen and paper. You know, that is how orders get executed off the pen and the paper. So we've been there the whole time. We just haven't been getting the credit. Right. We haven't been in the field. And um, I mean, I like I would love to learn how to drive a truck. I I just got a Ram Rebel. Right. Um, and I love it. But I've I've always been in SUVs. And now I've, you know, like graduated to this massive car that it takes a second. But after, you know, you get used to it, I'm backing up, uh, you know, I'm doing everything. Um, but like, how do you, can you get trained to become a, a truck driver? Like what's the first step if you were to give any advice on someone who, you know, a woman who wants to become, uh, get into the industry and maybe even wants to become a trucker? Is there a school or? Definitely. So a couple of years ago, and actually the, the law was just passed this February. When I got into trucking, I already had trucks. So I did not have to go to a school because I actually had the equipment that I could practice on by myself. So, and I was up against time too. Like I knew I needed to hurry up and get my license. So I went to DMV, which anybody can do. And they have the commercial driver's license manual, which is free. And you can just walk in there and ask for the manual. 
Now, as of February 7th of this year, they have changed the law to where you now have to go to CDL school to get an actual CDL license. But before, like years ago when I got mine, I literally just got the book. I studied the chapters that I needed to study and passed the test. Once you pass the test, it, it would give you access to your permit. Your permit, of course, will allow you to drive in the vehicle so you can practice as long as there's another license holder. So I used to pay guys, you know, like a couple bucks to just drive with me every day so I could kind of get the hang of it. But of course, now you have to go to CDL schools. So CDL schools, you know, you have them all over the country. They're pretty prevalent. A lot of the community college have them in their uh, curriculum also. So it's just as simple as Googling, you know, what's the closest uh, CDL school. And they are typically run for about eight weeks. So it's not something that you, it's going to take you, you know, five years to get your license. And truck drivers, I mean, they make a, a decent, you know, wage. What's it's, starting? It's not, what do they start at? You think? It just depends. Um, it's going to be, well, first it depends on if you're going to be a company driver, meaning you're going to go work for a company, or if you're going get, to get your own truck. Of course, you're going to make more if you get your own truck. Um, but even with that, there are going to be just different responsibilities that you're going to have to be financially and mentally ready to handle, um, like repairs. Again, you know, it's a lot more manageable if you're just running like in state. So like I started out with dump trucks because typically guys want to be home every day. You know, the days of these guys staying out for weeks at a time, while some of them do, most people want to be home every day. And then you're able to lay your eyes on your truck every day. So if your driver, ha you know, fails to mention that one of the tires is low. Well, if you go out to the yard and check on, you know, the equipment every day, that's something that you can see. Whereas if you don't see your truck for three months, when he gets back to that yard, I guarantee you that truck is going to be dinged up. The trailer is going to be dinged up. You know, these guys are just not going to tell you every little thing that happens on the road. So it's way more manageable if you can set your eyes on that truck every day. Right. And so let's say a woman wanted to partner up with you. It, what would that look like? So they would lease the truck from you? Yeah, so the way we do it now is, so you have what's called an authority or the more passive side is you just get the truck and you run it under somebody else's authority. So that's what I do. We help people get financing for trucks. Um, we also give them free classes to help them expand their knowledge of just different opportunities that the average trucker doesn't know. So while you're running under us, you know, every month that you run, you get a free class so that you're learning and earning at the same time. You know, I always tell my guys, go faster and farther than me. I'm not here to be your, you know, you're not my indentured servant. So if you're giving somebody, you know, a great rate to run under you, you're educating them with the hopes that they will go and expand. Um, Cause it's all, I'm always going to have more drivers, you know, so I never want to hold anybody back. And a lot of companies don't do that, especially the larger companies. They're going to just kind of slave you. I hate to say it. And, you know, stay complacent. Um, so we just do things a little bit different um, over here, but yeah, we can help get financing. And then once you get the truck, you come on a lease with us, lease with us, and we teach you and you learn why you earn. So amazing! That is just it's awesome because like, you're giving back. You know, it's not just like at the end of the day, it's like you got the nice car and you're traveling and you got the toys and everything, but none of that really matters unless you're doing something to help other people, right? Um, yeah. So, like, what what are you passionate about? Um, I'm really passionate about, so here's the thing. <laughs> I'm passionate about people just going for it. You know what I'm saying? Like I never would have thought 10 years ago or 12 years ago when all this hell was breaking loose and I was like having all these sleepless nights and, you know, almost going belly up that I would be sitting here telling you this story right now. I knew at some point I was going to break into like the million dollar game. But again, I had no idea what that was going to look like. So for me, it's just about people who I didn't need a bunch of, hey, you can do it. I didn't need a bunch of motivation because that is what I set for. Like, I'm going to do this. It was just I was beating my head up against the wall because I was working a lot harder in actuality than I, than I had to because I didn't know about contracts. I didn't know about certifications. I didn't know about certain business models where you're not working as hard. You're actually working a lot easier and you're making more money because you are subbing out the work. And I think that, especially for minority companies and women-owned companies, we just do not delve into the 
the benefits of project management. And so it's, it's not really something that's taught a lot. If you can break down a scope of work and you can see the entire picture, and this is the Virgo in me, and, you know, really, you know, deduce, okay, who needs to do this and what does this look like? I'm at the head and I'm calling all the shots, but I'm not going to go out here and dig all these ditches. I'm going to call some people in with some shovels. I'm going to call some people in with some dirt and I'm going to get them done. And so that I'm not spending as much energy right here, but I'm delegating. And then I can go over here and do the, the same with this project and the same with this project. Now you're exerting less energy, making more money because you've got the whole project. You're imploring, imploring other small businesses. So they're happy to work for you and you're getting more done, exerting less energy and you're making more money. I'm really passionate about people really understanding the value of project management and working smarter, not harder. Awesome. I love that. Working smarter, not harder. That's that's great. Um, I, I love the scalability of what you're doing, you know, because at the end of the day, if you don't have a business that you can scale, you're going to be a mom and pop for the rest of your life. But it really takes someone with a certain personality, right? So you, you know, just like myself, we want to really encourage women and um, support them. But if they don't have that personality, it, like how do you teach that really? You don't really. I mean, and again, it goes back to the project management. I tell people all the time, so with these contracts, you have to be a strong reader. Like you have to be able to break them down put it in an outline, comprehend what's asked of you. If you're not a strong reader, you just get somebody who is to help you. So same thing, if you're not the most, you know, people person or the most bubbly person, then you're going to have to find somebody who can sell, you know, what you do to somebody who can give you that opportunity. So we see companies do it all the time. That's why they have sales reps and, you know, all these kind of representatives, especially for somebody who's young or you haven't really made it yet. People are always going to be your greatest asset. So where you might can't pay somebody, you know, a thousand dollars a week to take all these meetings, you would say, okay, Hey, look, I'm going after this project, you know, help me out. And maybe, you know, I'll tell you, you know, the benefits of my company and I'll explain to you how this job is going to work. If you can go in here and, you know, put on a suit and, you know, a, a, a great face and, and make this guy believe that we can get this job done on the back end, I'll give you 10% or 20% or whatever, you know, they'll, they may be willing to barter with you. So I always say where you don't have money, and power, people will always be your greatest resources. Absolutely, yeah. You really are only as good as your team at the end of the day as an entrepreneur. Um, Absolutely. And, I mean, to me, like, when I discovered outsourcing, it was like, you know, it was like the, it was like the heavens opened up, you know? Like, I was doing everything in-house for so long, you know? Yeah. And then now it's just, I mean, I literally can do everything on my own. You know, and with, now, especially with the pandemic, I mean, people are staying home, you know, people have really pivoted on what they're, and people are looking to do business with other people. I mean, everybody's looking for, you know, everybody's got a business and everybody's looking for somebody to partner up with and do business with. So it works really well. You just have to work it. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that we're going into the years of collaboration oh, and, you know, and supporting each other. And I just, for me, like, I love women. I, I love everything about them. I love working with them. I love the way that their minds work, especially in a male-dominated industry. Yeah. You know, we think differently, we you know, about these projects. And sometimes, you know, I'll be working with, you know, another builder or whatever, and we'll be problem-solving, and I just am baffled by, <laughs> the, like, how their brains think, you know? Um, it, it's pretty amazing. Um, so do you have any upcoming speaking tours, conventions, or appearances? Oh, definitely. Oh, God. This is a, a super packed year. I don't, they're all super packed. Um, so let's see. I'm about to go to um, one of the largest cargo conferences in the world, um, as I do every year. Um, that's going to be May 17th through the 19th. That's in Amsterdam. Wow. And that's where all the ports in America and all the other continents to get together and they pretty much come together to um, demonstrate and kind of, you know, make these deals with moving all this cargo that has to go, you know, from China to United States of America and United States of America to China. So I sit on that panel. Um, I speak on the women in diversity uh, session. So I'll be there in May. 
Um, those conferences run about four or five times a year. There is Dubai, there's China, there's Europe, and there's um, Houston. So I'll probably do the Houston event also. We didn't do Dubai just because with COVID, it just was like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a collaboration with a bunch of uh, women business owners uh, coming out this year. Um, the uh, promotion and the uh, initiation and, you know, the book comes out later in the year. So we'll be in Mexico doing that. Um, I'm taking my own staff to Mexico because we're having like our retreat because I like to, you know, have company morale and all of that. Um, I also have some television projects that I'm currently working on right now. So I don't want to say too much about that. Um, but it's like, there's always something going on over here. Like always. Um, I just did a women's conference in Memphis last month. That was like over 300 women just talking about issues such as business, health and finance. Um, and, you know, just giving them the, the tools they need to go out here and kick ass. So just follow, subscribe. I mean, we always have something going on. There's always something, some irons in the fire. So trust me, you won't be disappointed. I love your social media. I mean, I watch it and it's just the way it's done, the way it's shot and the, how thoughtful it is. And it's just, it's cool, right? It's Thank just, you. yeah, it is. It's, it is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And you know, it, it, it brings people in, you know, it and it makes, it's like, what? Oh my God. It's like almost yeah. mind blowing. Right. Um, uh, I mean, I, myself, if I could, like, I would, you know, get your handbook and whatever it is. I mean, is there any, are you, do you have any material uh, that people can purchase or a book or anything that, that kind of lays out, you know, a formula for? Oh, definitely. So I did, I was heavy on the classes. Like when I first got into social media about three years ago, I was like doing classes like every month. And then I kind of like, it was like, ah, this is good, but I, I want to take it a little higher. So on our website, the website is www.thecompasscircle.com. If you look under products um, and or shops, we have some digital classes. Um, one of them, and I think the most popular one for just, you know, elementary, anybody in any industry is going to be our trucking and contracting masterclass. It says trucking and contracting because my background is in trucking, but the meat of the course is for anybody in business who wants to learn how to sell it to the government. Um, it's very like layman's terms, even though this stuff can be very technical, you got to bring it down a bit. So the average person can like understand it. So that's a really good class for anybody who kind of wants to, you know, like I said, sell their services to the government. Um, there's some other classes up there, like over dimensional freight, that's going to be more niche based for somebody who's already a trucker, but they want the freight that pays the most. So like, how do I get there, right? That's a great class for them. So there's definitely classes up there. It just depends on like what you're looking to do. But for anybody in general who wants to grow their small business, that trucking and contracting class is like two hours jam packed of information to get you started. That's awesome. Um, is that, do you have a code for our listeners or anything? Cause I mean, I want to take that class. <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty moderately priced. Um, I don't have a code for it, but it's not really that expensive. So if you guys go up there, I mean, it's also come, it comes with a workbook too, but I mean, take the information. I mean, people will really be surprised to see, we show you actual contracts that people have actually got. And one thing about me, I don't just focus on the millions. Um, people always think it's gotta be million, million, million. Well, first of all, you need some practice, right? And then second of all, what people don't know is the, the profit margin on a $10 million contract is not gonna be the same as like on a $100,000 contract. You're probably going to get a better markup on the on the lesser value. So there's a lot of money there. There's also a lot of um, we call it low hanging fruit to the government. You know, anything under two hundred fifty thousand dollars is kind of peanuts. But to the average business owner, you know, you get seventy five thousand here, one hundred twenty five there, you know, two hundred thousand there. That's going to significantly change your you know your business. So it's it, it can also be as you know intense as hiring rocket scientists for NASA. That stuff has to be outsourced, but it can also be as simple as facilitating, you know, supplies like cardboard boxes. So there's something there for everybody. Um, you know, just for anybody who's watching, you know, just grab the class, but more importantly, use the information. If I can do this stuff, you guys can do it too. And is there any like one-on-one -on -one coaching? I mean, like problems come up, right? I mean, this whole situation with, you know, the ports and not being able to get your merchandise. I mean, it's kind of crazy. 
on the trucking end of it, is there, you know, a way for, you know, when people have problems to reach out and for you to give advice? So I don't do as much one-on-one -on -one coaching anymore just because like we have a lot of people in our program and I'm always pulled in so many directions. It's kind of like grown beyond where I am just able to just help everybody. Um, I do open consultations up at certain parts of the year just to give people access to me. Um, we're going to be opening up uh, that the next go round um, this for the month of May. So if the, if the listeners subscribe, um, it's free to subscribe. You get all the emails on when that's going to happen. And those spots are going to fill up relatively quickly. Um, also, we have a couple uh, positions left to, for if anybody wants to go to the conference. The conference is called Break Bulk, and it's going to be May 17th through the 19th in Rotterdam. Mm. So I take small business owners with me over there. Um, right now, I think we have like maybe 10 or so that are going. But if anybody's really serious about getting in the room and really seeing where this money is coming from, you know, come on over to the conference, you know, walk around. We are going to do a mastermind to teach you how to posture yourself, you know, what to say when you get there, how not to be overwhelmed, you know, um, just different things so that you can get there and make the most of being in that room. And we're also going to be doing that again in October. There'll be Break Bulk Americas, which will be in Houston, Texas. So if you're not ready to go now all the way to Europe, you can catch us later at the end of the year when we go to um, Houston. Awesome. And everyone can go to your website and find out all this information. About oh, everything's there. Okay, perfect. So uh, we're going to wrap it up here. So I would just love like one or two things that you, you advice that you have for our audience. I would say think bigger. You know, a lot of times if you don't have the, so again, if you haven't seen it, it's hard to visualize yourself in this boss CEO role, right? So to just simplify it, the local, the state, and the federal government. So that means I'll just take me, for example, if you live in, you know, Virginia, okay, the cities are Norfolk, okay, and then the state of Virginia, and then you got the federal government who might be in charge of the federal prison there in Virginia. So you've got three tiers of, you know, opportunities that you can, you know, sell your services to the government. There's no shortage of money. These projects have to be furnished. On the local level, let's just say if you are a landscaper and all of the libraries in the city have to be, you know, maintenance, that would be a great contract for somebody who's, you know, new in landscaping to get those contracts. Those contracts typically last for one to five years. That's a great way for sustainability for a small business. You know, on the state side, if you can facilitate, you know, supplies, you can sell cotton balls to the state hospital. Another great way to find a, a, a easy product, mark it up and sell it to the hospital. Again, that contract will probably last between one and five years. And then for somebody like myself, if you're in the trucking space, you know, the federal prisons might need food taken from, you know, the warehouse to the jail. Again, that contract is going to be one to five years. So that's a great way to have that one or five or however many contracts you can get and not have to worry about where your next meal is gonna come from. I mean, it has been very life-changing for me, not only in the money, but how I see myself as the head, you know, how I run my company. I don't run behind my company anymore. You know, I have different positions, I have managers, I have, you know, people all over to handle certain things. So when things are coming at me, I don't have to go stop what I'm doing over here to go run over here. That's not how CEOs do it. There's a chain of command, you know, there's proper protocol. And so we just have to kind of get in that mind more, but you're not going to get there without project management. There's project management um, schools online. Um, some of them are free. Um, the local universities and colleges also have those too. So I'd say get more into the management aspect instead of the service aspect. So instead of you digging the ditch, you're hiring the ditch to get dug for you. Got it. Got it. Well, it, it has been amazing talking to you. And honestly, I'm sold. I'm like, where's my government contract, right? right. For construction, I'm, I'm going to your website right after this podcast. Okay. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. Um, we can find you at uh, thecompasscircle.com and yep. hashtag compass, the compass circle as well. Oh, yeah. If you're on Instagram, it's at the compass circle. There's going to be, I mean, I drop gems and jewels all day. Um, the website is, is going to have, again, the turnkey trucking program. There's financing options there. There's classes there. 
Um, there's also the link to the conference if anybody wants to come join us. I think you've got about almost a month um, before we're going to go over. So if you can get yourself ready to go, if you already have your passport, you know, come along. Um, Rotterdam is, is not as, as stringent as some of the other countries with COVID. And we made sure that we checked into that before we decided to go. So it's not a lot of issues there. Um, but come on, get in the room and, you know, take advantage of what's out here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Casey Cooper with the Compass Circle. So today we, uh, you know, had this amazing interview talking to Casey Cooper about um, her trucking company and um, how you can get into the trucking business, getting government contracts. Um, I just want to thank everyone for listening. Girl Flips podcast is sponsored by the Utility Babe Everything Belt. Hello, Coachella. If you're going to a concert or you're traveling and you got stuff, you put it in this belt and you're ready to go. Use the code GIRLFLIP20 by going to girlflip.com utility babe. Um, you heard this on Girl Flip, where women get it done. <laughs>